Estamos arrancando, vamos a ver si por ahí ya está Nick para la, para la entrevista. Sabemos que es tarde en Alemania, así que eh, vamos a verlo. Hey Nick, how are you? Hey man, good. Hey, man. Nice to see you. Good. Nice to see you. Thank you so much for for attending this this show. I know it's late in Germany, so I really really appreciate. Uh, yeah, uh, the first question for you basically is, uh, how do you discover rock and roll and which albums changed your life? Oh, I think weirdly I got into rock and roll a little bit late in life. Um, my parents didn't really raise me in a musical household, so I had very little of a basis there growing up. And my first entry into music was through my older brother who got into punk rock. And uh, I think over the years, You know, the most important albums to me growing up were probably like this um, Bay Area punk scene, Operation Ivy and Rancid and horrible shit like that until I was a teenager and I finally discovered, you know, like Led Zeppelin and Black Sabbath and stuff like that. But I had a weird musical upbringing kind of all over the place, going to like the, the very small, crappy little record store um, in our community and just buying stuff based on the album covers. So, you know, some of my first albums that got me into heavy music were like, Sailing the Seas of Cheese by Primus, for example. And uh, yeah. it's kind of been all over the board, yeah. Yeah, I discovered rock and roll late too, in the high school actually, because our friends, you know, said, hey, you should listen to The Doors and, you know, classic rock, Deep Purple. And it's like, oh, what the hell, what is this sound, you know? And yeah, totally, yeah. I understand. And well, about, about the, the guitar, how do you start to play the guitar? Well, um, my first instrument is actually drums. That was what I always wanted to play. And I started with that when I was maybe around, I don't know, 12 or 13. And uh, I got a shitty drum kit that I was playing as a kid for a while. And when I got to the age that I was, you know, interested in starting a band, which was probably, you know, 13, 14, relatively young, um, there was no one I knew in uh, the area I grew up in who could play guitar. So I just said, you know, screw it. Okay, I'll try and play guitar, too. So I saved up some money. I got a really shitty cheap guitar and started plunking away at that. <laughs> and um, that was the beginning of my career as a guitarist and also kind of the beginning of my career as like a multi-instrumentalist, if you, if you want to call it that, just picking up different instruments whenever there, were, there was the need for it or whenever someone wasn't available to play it. Yeah. How many instruments do you play? Well, I'd say I play guitar and drums, you know, halfway decently. I can play bass, too, um, and I, I try to play keyboard, synthesizer, stuff like this. Um, but I think calling me a keyboard player would be a little bit of a stretch. So, yeah, you know, the classic <laughs> rock trio, guitar, bass, and drums, I can do that pretty convincingly. But luckily there's computers yeah, now yeah. that can help you out with the rest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. Well, about talking about Elber, uh, can you tell us how to start the band and the process of the evolution of your sound? Because the sound changed, you started more like a stoner band, you know, heavy riffs, and now you start to combine more uh, psychedelic stuff also with uh, melo melodic and, you know, th this kind of sound. So how was the, the process of the evolution of your sound? Yeah, sure. Well, I mean, I think the story of the Elder Sound is kind of just the story of our development as musicians over the course of, of the past, like, oh, how many years now? Almost 15 years, I guess. Uh, we started the band when we were, I think, 17 or 18, so just finishing high school. And at that time, wow. we were really into heavy doom, stoner rock, um, even more extreme metal, in my case, like death metal and black metal. So the very first Elder music is like, Like before the first album, the first like mini CD was basically super extreme, kind of very slow sludge with these black metal shrieking vocals. Yes. And I think just as yeah. we as we got older and we became more uh, aware of our own musical uh, ambitions and also more interested in different music, uh, we also wanted to you know try and explore different stuff. And it was just a natural evolution over the years of never wanting to repeat ourselves, yeah. never wanting to make a record that's been made before, and always to try and push ourselves to do more and better. But the band definitely started as a very unserious hobby, and the minute it started gaining some momentum, I think we also started taking ourselves and our, our music a lot more seriously, too. 
Yeah. Also, I think you changed the the game for the stunner rock scene. You know, I mean, pro I, I probably you don't like this, but your sound changed everything. You know, a lot of bands try to sound like Elder now in these days. So you create something special. So how do you feel about about that? I mean, if that's the if that's the case, and if people feel that way, I'm very flattered. It's it's a great feeling, you know. And I I there's nothing I find more um, redeeming of what I've spent my entire you know adult doing to hear that it's like you know a positive influence for someone and I, i'm not trying to end up in a history book and i don't think the band will ever be famous or something like that but it's it's great and because i remember you know this band began too and it still you know to a certain extent is always influenced by the music and the musicians that we love and respect so to know that you might have that influence on someone else too it's it's cool it's a very like trickle down sort of community feeling yeah, yeah, you you have a big influence in new bands, and you have a lot of fans actually here in Mexico, in South America. Well, uh, I want to ask you: uh, part of the band lives in Germany, and the others in the U.S. So, how can you continue working and playing shows in these conditions? Well, yeah, I mean, to be honest, um, it's not easy. We this whole thing with, and now there's three of the four of us are living in Germany. And that basically just wow. happened within the past two years. And within the past two years, we haven't played a single show because we stopped to write and record a record. And then the pandemic started, so we haven't been able to get together. Yeah. And we've always managed the writing process somehow because we're used to it. Over the years, we've always lived in different places. And for a while, I was the only person living here, and the other band members were living in the U.S. So um, we've always made it work. We've been very good about, like, writing demos independently and carving out specific time for when we meet. We we're really just working on projects. But this is really a unique era in the band where now, um, you know, not only do we have a relatively new lineup, but also uh, you know, the majority of us are living in Berlin with now one in the States. It's, it's kind of weird. We're, yeah. we're learning as we do yeah. it, I think. Yeah, I think I understand. Uh, that happened with my small band, Binum Sabati, Gerardo, live in, in the UK for, for a while and, you know, the rest here in Mexico and we try to, to find a way to continue the band and, and it works at the end of the day. So how is mm -hmm. uh, your life in Germany? Do you like Germany or, you know? Yeah, I, I do. I mean, I think you know, I live in Berlin and I've lived here for the past like five or so years and... I do feel at home in this city. It's I don't know if I would necessarily feel as at home somewhere else in Germany, but it's a cool, you know, under normal circumstances, um, it's still a really fun, great place to be a, a creative person, and it's a, still a relatively affordable, you know, major European city uh, if you like to travel and, and see stuff, but still, you know, want to live a decent life on, like, an artist's budget. So it's cool here, yeah. Yeah, that, that's cool. I live better, and I think I live yeah. more freely and, and more interestingly here than I did back in Boston, so. That's cool. That's really, really cool. Uh, well, talking about shows, you will play at Desert Fest next year, so how do you feel in this point? Oh, man, I cannot wait for that. You know, this has just been, uh, I think everyone's really squaring up and really so ready to go to the next festival, and, you know. I, I'd, I'd take anything, you know, even a street performer you see doing some beatboxing is kind of interesting at this point. We're all so depraved and hungry for music. But, yeah, uh, I don't want to wish my life away, but, you know, if I could skip the next year and go there tomorrow, I think I probably would. Yeah, we really need a live music. Well, I'm lucky because with this show, I can bring some bands and it's like a private concert. So it's like, oh, finally, finally some music, you know? <laughs> so yeah, I yeah, totally that's understand. Nice. But I... Yeah. Yeah, but I miss, I miss the shows too. Well, now I want to talk, uh, well, this is more like a personal question for you. So it's about your last album, Omens. So do you think Omens has a big influence uh, from the old German crowd rock or is it just my imagination? Um, I always have a hard time answering the specific influence questions because I think, you know, we, we consume a lot of music all the time and it's like, uh, yeah. you know, original German kraut rock is definitely something that I've been heavy, heavy into for like the past decade. So I think it definitely puts its mark in there somewhere, but maybe more in spirit than in actual sound. Um, I think 
the more crowdy stuff that we do is still definitely spaced out and psychedelic in a, in a, a different sort of more melodic and more modern way. Um, cause a lot of the times I find this classic kraut sound, you know, the motoric beat and, you know, this noise style of music, uh, it's been done to death. So, um, yeah, it's an influence in there somewhere, but just as much as everything else is at this point. Yeah. Yeah, for me it sounds more like a crowd rock, a modern crowd rock album, and I love it. I love the the change of the sound. It's beautiful. It's a really great album. But I have this question, Thank you. And, and especially because you moved to to Germany, you know, and I I want to ask you about that. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, I think a lot of people make that connection, and, and sometimes you know you can probably relate. I think if you're too close to something you're creating, sometimes you don't realize even what you're doing, or you don't realize what even got in there in the first place. It's it's hard to say sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I know you are working on something new. I I watched a, a video of you and the Cadaver guys. So can you tell us a little bit about this new project? It's a new Elders album or what's going on? Um, I can't really tell much about this right now because we haven't uh, you know, made oh. any official announcements. So I can just say the two bands are working on a project together. But um, wow. yeah, right now you'll just have Good to, news. You'll have to follow... The social media for more yeah it's it's been cool you know um there's a lot of musicians living in the city and a lot of cool bands and we connected with those guys recently and uh, you know something clicked and uh so we decided to do something together but for more details i think you'll just have to keep up to date on the social media okay 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 well but talking about new projects uh you have a new one called delving so can you tell us a little bit about about the new album, about the, the new sound, about this project? Yeah, sure. Well, um, it was in like the dead of winter that basically I really felt the need to, to like put a project in front of me to, to do something because, um, you know, Elder, we're, we're still working on new music, but um, I really need some sort of her and some, some tangible goal to work towards. The live shows and Elder stuff is like still too far in the future. So, I told myself, okay, you're finally going to take all this material that you've been writing for the past years, because I, I write a lot of music, and a lot of it doesn't fit Elder. It's just, you know, things that I write for the fun of it. Um, and I've been telling myself that I would make a record just as a solo record for, like, a long time. And uh, that's what I decided to do. So I took, like, a couple of weeks. I collected the ideas, and then I booked some time at a friend's studio just to record the stuff. And I didn't necessarily, you know think that it would become a record. I kind of hoped it would. Um, but by the time the record was finished, it really felt like a pretty good collection of songs that I wanted to make into a new, you know, a new band or a new project. And that's how Delving was born, basically, just to kind of um, give myself a different name to do things that operate outside of the Elder Universe, things that sound different and to also yeah. get away from this kind of pressure of having, you know, some sort of an established name or some sort of expectations about what you do. Yeah. Can you tell us how, how do you pronounce the name of the album? I can't. I can do it. So can you do it for us? Yeah, it's called Hirschbrunnen. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's really hard. <laughs> I can I can Yeah. So when this album will be released, uh, I know you're working with Stigman Records, right? Yeah. Um, it's going to be released so, on June 11th. Oh, cool, cool, cool. So for, for all the fans, if you want, uh, just visit Stigman Records and pre-order your copy. You have two different uh, presentations, right? One with a, with a patch and the other one is just like a single, right? Yeah, I had this, you know, s silly idea to make a, a patch over here in Germany. There's like um, these old medieval, what do they call them? Coats of arms, I believe which is this kind of seal that a city uh, would have. And so I decided to make my own and almost like this is, a, you know, like sort of a fantasy, like a uh, fantasy universe of my own. And we did, a, we did a limited edition patch you could buy with the record. Those are sold out. I have some more that I'll probably sell on my own, but, you know, just a gag gift uh, makes something funny. Yeah, uh, can't wait to hear the new album. I mean... Uh, you sent me the first single and it's amazing and I can't wait for, for the, the full album. It's, so we are very excited about it. Yeah, me too. I'm curious to see how people receive it.
Yeah, I mean, I think re it will be happen. It would be really good. I want to ask you about South America. Do you think someday Elder will play in South America? You have a lot of fans there. Yeah, believe me, we're we're very much um, into that idea, and we really want to make that work. Um, I, I think a lot of people don't fully understand that the logistic difficulties we have with the band being in different continents yeah. somehow really does place a, a strain, you know, uh, oftentimes just very, you know, financially to get to places. And, yes. um, but we have like, you know, we have a team of um, booking agents who really are aware of this fan base. And like, we're also really hungry to go to new places and South America is very high on the list. So it's only a matter of time, yeah, yeah. I think. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. So, do, do you have any plans for a U.S. tour in the future? I mean, because you live now in Germany, three or four? Yeah, yeah, we've been trying to get, you know, we've planned like, I think, three U.S. tours at this point uh, in the past uh, year or so. And, you know, we're dealing with vaccination rollout, we're, wait, we're dealing with travel restrictions. We have a German in the band now, yeah. so we're dealing with visa problems. It's a whole, you know, headache to, to do a U.S. tour now that it was never before. And we're going to do it as soon as we, yeah. we can and as soon as we safely can. So, um, yeah, we're going to be announcing the next tour plans that we have for the U.S. very soon. But we don't exactly know right now. Or let's just say we're still working yeah. on it. I, I hope, I hope. I, I really want to see you again. I mean, you're one of my favorite bands. And well, the last question for, for you, because I know it's late in Germany. So can you recommend to our viewers uh, some of your current favorite bands, please? Oh, well, sure. Two records that I'm actually really listening to a lot recently. Um, there's a British uh, pianist named Greg Fote. And he has a yeah. record called, I believe it's called The Mage. I think it was from 2019. It's a very, you know, if you could say this kind of, classic British psychedelic jazzy record yeah. um, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. that goes to a lot of really cool groovy places. And um, another record that I've been listening to nonstop since it came out is this collaboration between two Norwegian uh, producers, actually. I don't know how well this will go over with your Metalhead fan base, but uh, Lindstrom and Prince <laughs> Thomas. And they they do this yeah. kind of like, Space disco, I think, is the genre. But if you're into psychedelic music and you're into like kraut rock and like early electronic stuff, um, I think you'll really dig it too. The record's just called Three. They've been doing a series of records, and this one's super cool. You know, um, if you're staying at home, you d or you're you know walking around the empty streets or something, it's just it's really good relaxing music. So I don't have, I'm sorry to all the fans of heavy music out there, but check out those if you like some <laughs> you know cool psychedelic shit. Oh, oh. Always is nice to change, you know. I mean, I, sometimes I listen a lot jazz, you know, Miles Davis, others, you know, Noi, for example, Elder, and I know Metallica. So I think it's really cool to change, you know, the sound of your soundtrack for every day. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's been a pretty. I've been on a pretty relaxing trip recently. Not a lot of heavy guitar music going going on in this household. Yeah, yeah. Well, Nick, uh, I thank you so much for your time. Uh, thank you for for stay with us. I know it's very special. You play here in Mexico, and I remember we visited the Anthropological Museum, and that was a really good experience. And I hope you can come back here someday and play more shows for your Mexican fans. And thank you so much for your time and for the introduction for to to this new project, Delvin. We are going to play uh, a song right now. So thank you so much, Nick. Yeah, thanks for having me. And, um, you know, our trip to Mexico was brief, but I think it's one of our really, really fond memories and a really unique time we had. So we can't wait to come back. And uh, thanks for everyone yeah, tuning in right now to listen to me. Take, take, take care. Take care, Nick. And say hello to everybody. And yeah, say, see you yeah, soon. Yeah, will do. Thank you so you much. Too, man. Bye. Take care. Yes. Bye. Él fue Nick DiSalvo de la banda Elder presentándonos a todos su nuevo proyecto Delving. Y bueno, para los que no eh, hablan un poco de inglés, pues bueno, le pregunté cuáles fueron como los primeros discos que, que escuchó y bueno, dijo que su familia no era tan adepta al rock and roll, así que gracias a su hermano empezó a escuchar muchas cosas de punk y bueno, eso fue como entró a este mundo. También le preguntamos sobre esta nueva banda Delving y bueno, el, el álbum va a salir próximamente en junio en Stigman Records 
Y no nos quiso dar muchos detalles, pero dejó entrever que, tal, que hay dos bandas que están trabajando que suponemos, no sabemos, pero creemos que es Elder y Cadáver, están haciendo algo juntos. Hay que esperar noticias de eso. Y bueno, vamos a escuchar un track justamente de Deadwing para todos ustedes en exclusiva para México en este Channel 666. Esto es el nuevo proyecto de Nick DiSalvo de la banda Elder. Gócenla. <música> 